Hydrogen is the oldest and most abundant element in the universe, considered to be at the origin of all the components of matter. In its gaseous state, hydrogen is the energy of the sun and the energy of all the stars. But paradoxically, it doesn't exist as a gas on Earth. Today, humanity is confronted with a double challenge, an energy challenge and a climate challenge. The energy challenge is how to satisfy the growing needs of a developing demographic, and especially the emerging economies that need lots of energy in order to develop. At the same time, we face a climate challenge, global warming, which today has become terribly disturbing. Here, we are in front of the glacier at Chamonix. It was several kilometers longer some decades ago. And this glacier is retreating very rapidly. It's losing five meters of thickness per year on average, which is enormous. In the polar regions where I go often, it's the same problem. The surface area of the North Pole ice pack is shrinking considerably and is also losing thickness. It is urgent to act against greenhouse gas emissions. One solution is hydrogen. Hydrogen is everywhere on the planet. Here, for example. It is present in water, in this ice, and in methane. It is abundant everywhere, and we need to exploit it. Hydrogen is one solution, and we must start working on it today. Here we are at the Air Liquide site in Anvers. It's the group's largest hydrogen production site. These units produce hydrogen from methane. Methane, CH4, reacts with water, H2O, to produce hydrogen, H2. This hydrogen is then delivered to our customers through our pipeline network. Hydrogen has a great future in refineries since, in fact, without hydrogen, we can't produce the hydrocarbons of tomorrow. The primary use of hydrogen in a refinery is to remove pollutants from fuel and from finished hydrocarbons. In this way, we contribute to preserving the environment. We have to develop energy solutions that are able to use alternative and renewable feedstocks. Here in our pilot plant in Karlsruhe, we are converting this straw into sulfur-free, high-grade diesel for your car. The biomass will be, under the usage of oxygen, converted into carbon monoxide and hydrogen to become fuel at the end. The whole process is environmentally friendly as it helps to reduce CO2 emissions. Today, automobile traffic is this. Noise, pollution, smells. Tomorrow, in 2020, with cars running on hydrogen, it will be this. Before we can use these cars on a daily basis, we are developing fuel cells and the storage and distribution of hydrogen. Here at Axan, a subsidiary of Air Liquide, we develop fuel cells that are more and more reliable and productive. We continue to improve their longevity to reduce their cost. A fuel cell uses hydrogen and oxygen, which, when combined, produce electricity and water. The fuel cell is a non-polluting electric generator that can fuel emergency power units but can also drive small vehicles. These vehicles use exchangeable hydrogen cartridges. These cartridges are the result of Air Liquide's research.
Every morning, members of the hydrogen energy team and myself are pretty proud you know, to know that we are working on technologies that are enabling cars to run on the streets without producing any greenhouse gas emissions. Buses operating with fuel cells transport senators and parliamentarians that are moving from various buildings here on the hill in Ottawa. These innovations and these projects allow the general public to familiarize itself with hydrogen. It also allows the vehicle manufacturers, cars, buses, trucks, to develop the hydrogen program. We are here today at General Motors in the US. General Motors has produced this vehicle and uses an electrical motor. The electricity produced by the vehicle comes from a fuel cell which uses hydrogen. One of its beauty, it only emits a little bit of water. General Motors have chosen us, Air Liquide, for our innovative technologies and our ability to fuel this vehicle as quickly as any other vehicles in the market. Project Driveway is a program that General Motors launched in the fall of 2007 where we plan to deploy 100 fuel cell electric vehicles in the Southern California, New York City, and Washington, D.C. area. We'd like to thank Air Liquide for their part in bringing this hydrogen future to the forefront. We can produce hydrogen from various ways. Here in Bekanko, we produce hydrogen using water. Water, H2O, could be split when you pass an electrical current through it. Hydrogen on one side, oxygen on the other side. Electrical current, electricity, comes from renewable energy, those water dams that we have here in Canada, making the entire supply chain completely green. This hydrogen then is stored here at minus 253 degrees centigrade. In a few months, this hydrogen will be shipped to a project on the West Coast, which will be fueling 20 fuel cell buses for the Olympics in 2010 and continued operations until 2014. In 1874, Jules Verne wrote in his novel, Mysterious Island, I believe that one day, hydrogen and oxygen will become the inexhaustible sources of heat and light. In the field of clean energy, three molecules will play key roles from this point on. First, hydrogen, the molecule of energy par excellence. It is a clean molecule. When paired with oxygen, it produces water. And when paired with carbon, it makes hydrocarbons, which are, as we know, the basis of energy today. The second very important molecule in combustion energy is oxygen. It enables us either to improve the efficiency of processes or to produce in a cleaner way and therefore to support the environment. Finally, CO2, carbon dioxide, is the residual molecule that results from combustion. The challenge is to limit its effects, and tomorrow, to sequester and to store it underground. These three molecules will make up a very important area of expansion for the Air Liquid Group in its current fields of expertise, as well as in those of tomorrow.